A lot of the boards we recommended from our previous video have either been discontinued or weren't the best for their price anymore, so it's time for an update. In this video, we will go through the boards that we think are the best for the following categories. Starting with the category of electric short boards. These are the boards that we think are the best for their respective price. We'll start with the most affordable and then work our way up. If you're looking for a competent shortboard, the cheap Tiny Mini 3 SL is what you should get. Tiny didn't cut any corners with this, giving the Tiny Mini 3 SL above expectation specs and a well-rounded riding experience. With the tried and true Hobbywing ESC, you get the proven smooth speed control and the 10S3P 281 watt hour battery, which is also a lot bigger than expected. The power is good enough too, unlike some small brands who try to cheap out on their entry level board with single hub motors. Tiny's Mini 3SL's dual 550 watt motors can handle most inclines for average weight riders. But obviously, a $359 board can't be perfect. Going with hub motors on a short deck where you stand almost directly on the trucks means you will feel all of the road vibrations. Thus, we'd recommend upgrading to the 105mm donuts wheels if you ride regularly on poor roads, but that will set you back $439. However, if you don't want the most affordable shortboard and instead are willing to spend more money for a smoother ride board, we'd recommend the X-Way Wave, which from time to time can go on sale for around $600. X-Way Wave has been very popular since it was launched in 2021, and for good reason. It has one of the most refined riding experiences for a shortboard, using a comfortable deck with nice concave forged trucks that are known to be deliciously responsive, and of course, a Hobbywing ESC for that perfectly smooth control. On top of the excellent riding experience, it has lots of useful features. Since most of us get shortboards for their portability, hot swappable batteries are one of the most useful features for shortboards. You get to carry extra batteries in your backpack if you need the range, and when you don't need to go far, not having a giant battery bolted to your board keeps the board light. Also, on top of that, the board has IP55 waterproofing, integrated LED lights, and a mobile app that allows switching between hub and belt drive. For those who want to fly with your board, there is also the 99 watt hour travel battery. The only flaw we can nitpick on the Wave would be the board's weaker power. With 10S2P and dual 504 watt motors, the X-Way Wave is merely competent when it comes to power and torque, and is a little bit weaker than some competitors, such as the $559 Tiny Mini 3 Belt or the $549 WowGo 2S Mini. With that being said, while the more power the merrier, I don't think most riders need excessive power when it comes to shortboards, and the Wave with the belt drive is still more powerful than any hub-driven shortboards anyway, and plenty strong to drive you up steep hills. All in all, the ride quality, product polish, and useful features make the X-Way Wave the best shortboard at any price for most people. Now, if you're looking not for a regular board, but a board with extra power, then you should get the $799 Tiny Mini 3 Pro. I don't think it's practical to go for over the top power with a 30 inch deck, but I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money. What I'm telling you is that the Tiny Mini 3 Pro is that crazy board with crazy power. And it is, of course, a lot of fun. As is often the case with Tiny, the Mini 3 Pro packs a lot of specs, but the highlight here is definitely the dual 2,775 watt belt motors and the 13S battery setup. Everybody who rode the board will tell you this setup delivers a big punch. It is the most thrilling board to ride. From standing still, a flick of the throttle will send you rocketing off, leaving everyone else in the dust. Super fun. Tiny's proprietary trucks are pretty good and lean on the stable side, which makes sense considering the outrageous 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour top speed. And the higher top speed is partly contributed by one of the often underappreciated parts of the board, the 105 millimeter wheels. We like big wheels because one, big wheels are safer as you can go over bumps and cracks and tree branches safely. And two, big wheels reduce road vibration, something that can get quite bad on a short board. The Tiny Mini 3 Pro has three wheel options and we're familiar with all of them. The 105S wheels from Boosted OEM are the softest and have a lot of grip. 
This is followed by the 105 All Season Wheels, which use a material somewhere between rubber and PU. It has a slightly smaller contact patch than the All Season Wheels, but more than the 105mm Cloud Wheels. Personally, I'd mostly prefer the boosted 105S and have no preference between Cloud Wheels and All Season Wheels, so you could just pick whatever is more available in your location. When it comes to the battery option, we tested the 393 watt hour Molly Cell P42A version, and that got us to 16 miles or 26 kilometers riding super fast. Definitely get the 468 watt hour Samsung 50S version if you need more range but are not willing to ride slower for it. Now, before we conclude the next session, just some honorable mentions. If you care only about portability and nothing else, the $400 99-watt hour X-Way Ripple is the most portable board, sitting at 13.1 pounds or 5.9 kilograms. While it is a board with meh power and range, it is an agile board made with high-quality skate parts, especially having a beautiful deck and forged trucks. If the X-Way Wave is not on sale and you are looking for the most affordable belt-driven shortboard, you should pick between the WowGo Mini 2S and Tiny Mini 3, as both are similarly priced and have similar specs. And if you are looking for something pretty and without a kicktail, the 33-inch $649 Backfire Zealot V with its sleek icy blue light along the deck is the board that stands out. It is pretty portable at 16.8 pounds or 7.6 kilograms and has a pair of powerful 750 watt belt motors. It is a responsive ride made for people who like a powerful, portable, and petite board that passes on kicktail. Now let's move on to the long board categories, starting with the budget segment. I actually have quite some strong opinions on the best budget electric longboard, and I actually have a top three recommendation. And only for this segment, I'm going to rank them not by price, but by how good I think they are. And the third place goes to the $399 WowGo 2S Max. In March of 2022, the WowGo 2S Max was launched at $479 and crushed the competition with its 12S battery, which was considered groundbreaking at the time. Going with a 2S battery gives its dual 550 watt hub motors enough power, making the 2S Max the most powerful affordable electric skateboard for 2022 and for much of 2023. Then the competition got fierce, so WowGo 2S Max got a few rounds of price cuts and now sits at $399. Back in 2022, I wouldn't have believed you if you told me this would one day sell at $399. It is always nice to see competition working for us consumers. If you take a look at the specs, the WowGo 2S Max doesn't disappoint. The only other board that has comparative specs and a 12S battery would be the $399 Tiny Ultra SL, which is also a good alternative with a similar ride profile, meaning stable, has good power, has smooth control, and uses a slightly flexible deck. There are a few cardinal rules to follow when buying a budget electric skateboard. Thou shalt not go for single hub, for they are weak and give uneven braking. Thou shalt not buy from no-name brands, for they almost always skimp on quality and are often unreliable. If you followed these rules and did any amount of research, you would come to the same conclusion that the WowGo 2S Max, with its low price, good specs, polished build, well-rounded riding experience, and a nine-month warranty, is the lowest priced affordable electric longboard you should buy. And for those who can't stand hub motors and have to go for belt-driven boards for a smoother ride and stronger torque, the number two here is... Yet another WowGo, the $449 WowGo 3E. Remember back in 2018 when the boosted Dual Plus with its 22 miles per hour or 36 kilometers per hour top speed was retailing for $1,400? Those days, everybody tried to make something similar to boosted, and the WowGo 3X is one of the better attempts. It launched in 2019 at the price of $749 and was super well received. This WowGo 3E, launched in mid-2023, is the affordable version of that. It went with the same ride profile, meaning a flexible deck, dual belt drive, and the whole orange and black color scheme. It has great specs, a 12S 2P battery, and dual belt motors that are bound to give more torque than any hub board. And until very recently, you couldn't dream of getting a belt-driven board for less than $500. 
Overall, the WoWGo 3E is an all-around great board and was actually our number one until the next board showed up in the 11th hour, forcing me to rewrite this script. And that board is the $499 Ace Deck Stella S3. Ace Deck is not playing around here. Putting a 13S 2P battery in a $499 dual belt driven board. As if that's not good enough, they use Samsung 40T cells. I'd expect the board to sell for at least $699 just for the battery it uses. And remember when I said it was almost impossible to get a belt driven board for less than $500? The Stella S3 not only uses belt motors, but uses big ones. These are dual 1500 watt 6355 motors, even bigger than WowGo 3E's dual 650 watt 5055. With this setup, the Stella S3 is powerful, but its highlight would actually be its torque. It has a 1 to 2.7 gear reduction, giving the board a quote unquote normal 28 miles per hour or 45 kilometer top speed, despite the big motors and 13S battery. The board is way above its class when it comes to torque. Just a few steps behind Meepo Voyager X, which is a $799 board that was known for its torque and power. And it's not a one trick pony either. Speed control, it uses the tried and true Hobbywing ESC, perfectly smooth and intuitive speed control, but dialed to be a bit punchier than typical Hobbywing ESC. Deck, it has a mild flex and comfortable wide concave. Trucks, they are good and more stable than responsive. So WowGo 3E is a more relaxed board with a more flexible deck, more responsive trucks, and more gentle speed control. The Ace Deck Stella S3 has more battery, more torque, and more thrill. We love both boards, but Stella S3 gets your nod as number one as we can't argue with 13S 2P with Samsung 40T cells. Now, a few honorable mentions. If you are looking for a board with a sleek design that has all the electronics integrated inside its deck, then the Backfire Era 2 is that board, and it's only $399. It didn't make our top pick as the dual 650 watt hub wasn't as powerful, and the 187 watt hour LiPo battery wasn't as big as our top choices. But design wise, Backfire Era 2 is where it's at. The sleek design doesn't look just better, it is also lighter at 16 pounds or 7.3 kilograms. Also, I trust that IP65 is water resistant more with a design like this. Next, if you can't live without forged trucks, the Max Find Max 5 Pro at $499 is the only longboard we know that has CNC precision forging trucks. Forged trucks are more durable than cast trucks and hence safer. MaxFind also uses interesting material for the deck as well. Again, this is an integrated deck. It just wasn't a sleek design this time. But again, I'll trust the IPX5 waterproof rating a little bit more as the electronics aren't exposed. If you're willing to shell up a bit more money, there are tons of choices out there. Boards at this price are usually good, but these are our favorites as they bring something different than other boards. So let's go according to price here. The first board we think is worth your consideration is the $729 Meepo Flow. It wasn't until 2023 that we had good cruiser boards for under $1,000. And what Meepo does with the Flow makes sense. If you want to make a board responsive and smooth to cruise around, you will give it a 35 inch deck so the turning radius sits between long board and short boards. Give it a kicktail for those really tight turns and you will go with double kingpin trucks for even tighter turns and for maximum carving fun. You will give it super soft wheels to maximize the ride smoothness and hence use those 105 millimeters from Boosted and you will use the smoother Hobbywing ESC rather than a Lingyi ESC. Meepo Flow has a good design and credit has to go to Evolve Stoke as Meepo just stole the formula, even the looks, and just added the 105 millimeter wheels. Gave the board stronger motors, a bigger battery, and sold it for a lower price. And we think this is the case where the copy is better than the original here. We love cruising around with the Meepo Flow. It is just so smooth. So it's definitely the board that we'd recommend to anyone. Next, just a little bit pricier, we have something completely opposite, which is the $799 Propel Pivot S. If Meepo Flow was the smoothest, most relaxing board at this price, the Propel Pivot S is the most thrilling and aggressive board at this price. The Pivot S has a lot of highlights. First, getting a carbon fiber deck for $799 is sweet. 
And with dual 6374 watt belt motors plus aggressive Lingi ESC, it is pretty clear that this board was designed for torque and power. The Propel Pivot S is the most powerful board at this price range. If you are wondering, yes, it's even more powerful than the supposed torque specialist, the Meepo Voyager. Its stiff deck and stable trucks also make it easy to harness that power. The Propel Pivot S is also a two-in-one board, meaning you can swap to all-terrain wheels and go off-road with it. At $999 for the two-in-one all-terrain, Propel Pivot S is still a good buy that I can stand behind, but it's not as exciting as paying just $799 for the Pivot S Street, as you will be flooded with many great choices if you are prepared to spend more than $1,000 on a two-in-one. And speaking of two-in-one, the next board we have is the $999 Tiny Explorer. Tiny Explorer is the affordable all-terrain board that I'd recommend. Tiny Explorer is actually a misnomer, as the dual 3500 watt motors aren't sufficiently powerful enough to go off-road hiking. But if you like the comfort of big wheels, no road vibration, and not having to dodge tree branches, then the Tiny Explorer is a good board for that. With a flexible deck, Hobby Wing ESC, and double kingpin trucks, all mean the board is very smooth to ride. In case you were wondering, the bigger 12S 4P battery is the reason I picked it over the $899 Meepo City Rider 3, which is another good option and a newer board that has an almost identical power and ride profile. These two pack great specs for their price, unlike the next board we have on our list, which is more about polish, quality, and features, which is the $949 X-Way Flex Pro. The X-Way Flex Pro may not have the best specs for the price, X-Way never does, but it almost always gives a better overall user experience. The X-Way Flex series uses a very flexible deck with an aggressive concave, which everybody loves and a pair of forged Tris trucks, which everybody also loves for how precise and responsive they are. The X-Way Flex Pro is not the most powerful board, nor does it have the biggest battery, but it is just a bit more refined in both its build quality and its ride feel when compared to other brands. And if you are one who likes refined stuff, then I'll point you to the X-Way Flex Pro. But if you aren't, and you want the absolute best electric longboard that has the look, has the power, and has the range, then, the $1,099 Backfire Zealot X is your best bet. The Backfire Zealot X has that stunning look with its icy blue lights along the deck and the cool looking Halo remote. It also has the performance and specs to warrant paying a grand for it. First things first, this board has a lot of power, going with a 14S battery and a dual 1500 watt 6358. This was the most powerful street setup that we rode on with a super thrilling torque, reaching its 31 mile per hour or 50 kilometer per hour top speed effortlessly. These are forged trucks, of course, and they are stable for high speed and responsive for turning. Precise and no slope, of course. The deck is on the stiffer side, which is good for stability, and the concave wasn't as pronounced as the X-Way Flex, which is the only regret I have here. All in all, the Backfire Zealot X has everything, and is probably everything you want out of an electric longboard. Unless you are not looking for a street setup and are prepared to spend even more for... Again, we will sort by the increase in the price. Starting from the most affordable all-terrain electric longboard that's over $1,000. And we will start with the $1,199 Evolve GTR series. I never thought I'd ever have Evolve on my list, but I'd never thought Evolve GTR, launched at $1,600, would one day be sold at $1,199. Both Bamboo and Carbon decks are selling at the same price, which is a little bit surprising. As usual, Evolve gives you better skate hardware, most notably going with forged and CNC double kingpin trucks. On the spec side of the thing, Evolve as always aren't amazing, but it kind of holds up against its direct competitor $1,199 Meepo Ninja. Needless to say, when the performances are neck and neck, I'd have to pick the famous Australian brand as the winner. I know we talked a lot of crap about Evolve, but at the end of the day, its post-sales service and reliability are still a tier above any Chinese brand. However, often the other brands have so much more performance to offer over Evolve, and that's why as we further move up the price, I'd instead recommend the $1,499 Meepo Vader over similarly priced Evolve Hadian. I think you'd want to feel the difference when shelling out $1,500 on an electric skateboard, 
and you'd probably deserve a board with gear drives, and for that I'd recommend the Meepo Vader. Instead of going belt, the Meepo Vader went with gear drives. They also configured it to have 1x4.4A high gear reduction to go max on torque and give the board a thrilling acceleration. Trust me, this is the board you want for a drag race. High top speed is nice when you have a stretch of straight roads, but amazing torque? You feel it every time you pull the throttle. It's fun. Obviously, other aspects of the board are amazing too, which is a given for most boards above $1,000. Good double kingpin trucks and a comfortable carbon fiber deck with a nice concave. The deck is stiff, but these 165mm Cyclone wheels take away most of the road vibrations anyway. They are also super grippy. Next, if you want to pay more for refinement and features, you can get the $1,749 X-Way Atlas Carbon Pro. There's a lot of configuration here, starting from dual belt drive at $1,749 all the way up to gear four-wheel drive at $2,499. The X-Way Atlas Pro is a great ride, of course, but what sets it apart is its rich selection of accessories, such as the Ox Pack, tire mud guards, pole bars, and more. Similar to the X-Way Flex Pro, the Atlas Carbon Pro is made for those who are willing to pay a little bit more for the best board possible. But for those who want something that's a lot different than a prototypical all-terrain board, you will probably prefer the Ace Deck Nix Z3 Series, which starts at $1,599 and maxes out at $2,899. Hardcore skaters will tell you that high-performance electric skateboards don't look like this or this. Instead, it should put the giant battery atop the deck for maximum ground clearance so that you can use a really, really large battery. It also should come with a flexible mountain board deck, preferably with foot binders for bouncy off-road situations, for jumps, and for allowing you to shift your body weight aggressively for tighter turns. Ace Deck Nix Z3 also uses suspension trucks that swallow up any road vibrations. They are super stable. We went from 37 miles per hour or 60 kilometers per hour on it without foot bindings and felt super comfortable doing it. If you are looking for a mountain board board, Ace Deck Nix Z3 is the obvious choice. Ace Deck built the Nix Z3 really well and the specs are really good for its price too. Last but not least, we have another heavy-duty all-terrain board. The $2,599 Propel Endeavor 2 Pro. If you want a tank that can go off-road, you might want some crazy monster like the Propel X4S, which I'm not even sure is classified as an electric skateboard anymore. But if you want something that can hike an off-road mountain trail but still be maneuverable enough to be practical on a regular road, then the Propel Endeavor 2 Pro is the board that does just that. The Propel Endeavor series has suspension trucks, so they eat up bumps and cracks without passing the vibration to your feet. And when riding over cracks and bumps, you float up and down instead of feeling the harsh knock. Propel calls the Endeavor series the SUV of electric skateboards, and uh, ARG. While I hate to parrot marketing spiel, the higher riding height and the floating sensation through obstacles really do feel like riding in an SUV. The Endeavor 2 Pro especially is the smoothest board amongst the series, going with Flipski VESC, delivering ample power and also perfect smoothness and speed control. While the board isn't agile by any means, this is, after all, still a giant board with wide suspension trucks. Propel Endeavor 2 Pro isn't actually too cumbersome for regular streets. L-turns on sidewalks are doable, which is something tanks like the Propel X4S couldn't do. So, this concludes our list from $400 to $2,599. Let me know if you disagree with any of our picks. If you want to do your own research, check out our website, where we have all the numbers and charts. Ride safe, guys.